Hello, welcome to our initial attempt at YouTube Live. Don't know how many people are going to show up. A lot of people will be able to watch this uh, as a recording. Coach Dave Serrano is currently on location at Tufts University as part of the Showball Baseball Camp. Um, Coach Serrano has also just undertaken a new head coaching position um, in the Knoxville, Tennessee area, NAIA program, which I think is going to be fantastic. You know, this initial part of the video, before people start coming on board and we'll take some questions, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention when you find your way to this video is Coach Serrano and, and myself, we get approached an awful lot to market products, represent products, demonstrate products, et cetera. Um, and part of what we're going to talk about this evening is our mission statement is now going to be about the teaching of the game, the teaching of all aspects, whether I'm an athlete, whether I'm a student athlete looking to play in college, parents, uh, we want to be able to inform and educate. And on that note, you may notice I have a six-tool hat on and a six-tool jersey, and I have baseball blue book uh, that all of my videos are posted on. And there's a reason for that. Both Coach Serrano and myself feel it's strongly important to begin the education to the realities of our interpretation of youth baseball, high school baseball, college baseball, college recruiting, and in some cases, professional baseball. Baseball Blue Book, Baseball Blue Book is the, the LinkedIn of social media. It's all things baseball. Bring everyone to um, summer programs and scouts and uh, it's literally the yellow pages, uh, which is something when you were a dinosaur back in the 60s and 70s, you didn't have the ability to go on a computer, you use yellow pages. And that's the baseball blue book, albeit now on our phones. And we can follow video, we can send video because college coaches, student athletes, they collect video, they send video out. And the blue book is going to allow parents and families and athletes to be able to gather information, gather insight, connect the dots, and, and be able to find whether it's equipment, apparel, programs, lessons, etc. cetera. Six tool. If this is something that you may not have heard of, you should go ahead and look this up on your social media platform of choice. Six tool is an app that has been created by former major league and college baseball players in hopes of creating a classroom type environment. You know, NFL has the Wonderlick test. You know, the, in school, in high school, we have the ACT or we have the SAT, which is trying to gather what information we have as students so we know, you know, what type of curriculum they should kind of gravitate towards. Six tool is the ACT and the SAT of baseball. How much of the game do you know? How much of the game do you need to know? Um, and this is something that is going to be introduced to college programs, travel baseball programs, high school programs. If you own any type of youth organization or you work within any youth baseball organization, this is a tremendous tool that teams can use for their entire programs, freshmen, JV, varsity teams, if you have a team, a travel organization, and you have a bunch of different teams, this is an app that you're going to be able to utilize throughout your whole system, allow you to engage with your players and your coaches, most importantly, to make sure they're up to date on all rule changes, all rule uh, understanding and awareness within the sport. You can find a baseline on what what type of knowledge your student athletes currently have 
uh, what you would like to teach. In other words, you as coaches control the curriculum. And so I find this to be a fascinating tool that will go through in-game situations. We'll go through rule interpretations, uh, whether it's pitching, hitting, fielding, uh, ground rules, et cetera. The sixth tool, which is aptly named because really at the end of the day, the five tools are physical, but one of the most important tool is the mental game and awareness that a student athlete has that can separate them, create opportunities to get between the lines. And that's the sixth tool. So it's appropriately named. And Coach Serrano and myself, when Dave joins me, hopefully here later this, this evening, uh, you know, I'm going to, we're going to get into six tool a little bit, but I want you to understand our focus from this point forward, our mission statement is to help parents, to help student athletes. And I want to tell you where we're coming from. You know, the biggest thing is, is I just spent, and Coach Serrano has just spent four days in Boston, uh, Mass, student athletes from all over the country, approximately 700 student athletes and their families uh, that came from as far away as Texas and Florida and Minnesota. And I had the opportunity to meet a lot of these people. And all of the parents expressed some degree of frustration. And they're not understanding the recruiting process. They're not understanding why my son isn't being recruited. Um, and I want to touch on those topics today. Uh, one of the things is you're going to see me put my glasses on because I can't read without them. But one of the things that I want to um, make sure um, that we're providing to parents is an understanding that not all high school baseball players are going to um, play in college. And I know that sounds mean, it sounds abrupt, uh, but it is a fact. And I wanna, we wanna talk about that. And this is why I wanted this to be live, whether we get questions or not. I, I'm gonna ramble a little bit, but I'm gonna share some things with you. If you have a question, if you're on Twitter, you're on YouTube, please just type it in. I'm gonna get it. When Dave joins me, we're gonna add, uh, Dave into the mix. We're going to answer your questions. Parents this week spent on average of $2,500 to attend a camp. That was not the cost of the camp, but that's kind of the, the total expenditure with regard to hotels, travel, et cetera, food, lodging, and the camp. And you probably had, I'd say, well over 100 to 150 college coaches Predominantly, um, the higher level academic uh, coaches at this particular camp. But we got to talk to a lot of these coaches from Patriot League, Ivy League, NEP, NEPSAC, uh, you know, NESCAT uh, Conference, Tufts, Bates, Bowden, et cetera, um, Bucknell, uh, a lot, Holy Cross. We got to talk to these coaches and we got to ask them, you know, what is it that you're frustrated with so that we can begin to share with parents and student athletes and make them aware so that they can spend the next few months or a year or two to work on those things. And so some of the information that I share with you obviously is my personal opinion. Now, when coach Serrano comes, he's going to give you his personal opinion. The number one, the number one topic amongst all the coaches that you as a parent need to be aware of, and I've banged this drum, drum for years, decades, lack of physical skill set, meaning physical presence, size, strength, foot speed, it's missing. And what's happening is a lot of colleges are turning to the portal and the JUCO route or route, however we want to say that, because they can plug and play a physically prepared man to play a position. Now, this is important. And it's important because 
the vast majority, and I'm going to say over 90% of families that attended the showcase in my backyard this year, I have nothing to do with it. Not compensated by it. I don't participate in it. I attend it to speak with coaches. And I attend it if I have players, families that I'm working with, and I help them understand the, the lay of the land in the environment. <clears throat> but all of these college coaches would tell you that 90% of the participants did not have the physical strength necessary to be able to play at the collegiate level. And so right out of the gate, there's a big red X. And a lot of these guys are not going to get to that next visual level of skill set evaluation because they don't have that physical, um, the physicality as a business card or calling card. And why does that matter? Parents and student athletes are pulled in so many different directions that they often spend time doing lessons. They often spend time doing showcases, playing games, playing games from the early spring through the late fall. So when are they squeezing in or when are they fitting in strength training? And for, for the, all of those naysayers, and, and trust me, I get all kinds of messages all the time. Fire away. Strength training is the number one issue, deficiency in all of youth sports, particularly baseball. We don't do enough of it. Why? There's not really enough money in it because travel ball clubs try to incorporate it. They don't have the right people that run it. It's not as structured on an individual basis. That's a story for another day. But we need to start incorporating, when I say we, Families, student athletes really need to separate and make time for caloric intake, stretching, and strength training. It is critical. It is not a part of, it is a critical component to becoming a college student athlete. So I want to get that right out there. You know, when you see 700 young men and 630 of them, right out of the gate, are, are kind of mentally crossed out because they just don't have the physical tools, whether that's arm strength, foot speed, just strength, hitting strength. You know, and now we're down to evaluation of only 70, but all of these other parents have paid all of this money. That's a problem in my, in my opinion. And it's a frustration. It's a source of frustration. The other part of this is when you attend the showcase, you're going to be one of two things. You're going to either A, create an exposure opportunity, or B, you're going to be exposed. And so it's really important, you know, digressing quickly, and this is not a book promotion. I've written books and I've kind of laid the whole thing out from, as silly as this sounds, ages three to nine with fun over fear, ages 10 to 15 with the process. And then the recruiting process is ages 15 to 21. The other book, The Shift, which is really important in today's world, and I'm going to get to that. These are things that I've laid out. Um, and for whatever reason, either people don't like to read or they haven't found their way to the books yet. But I could tell you story after story after story of families that over the last, let's just say, 20 years while, while being a parent and a college coach that have taken or utilized my words or my thoughts and my advice. And they've, <laughs> it's paid off. And these boys, some of these boys are now 27 or 28. And I, again, I have videos on YouTube where they do the talking. It's not me telling you what they did. It's them telling you what they did and how they did it. But I can just tell you that the strength component will make your skill sets absolutely shine. And so if you take the time, I there's a young man, I know his dad is probably watching. I don't have my glasses on yet. The young man, uh, I think when I started talking to his dad, the young man might have been 12, 11, 11, 12. This young man now works out at my favorite facility, which is Cressy Performance, but that doesn't matter. What matters is this boy and another boy of similar age 
they've started working out. They've started strength training. They send me their weights, you know, once a week, you know, and they go up and down. But the number one thing is they are, they have a structure and a routine that includes strength and conditioning. They stay athletic. They're not spending all this money trying to chase four and five games every single weekend. And so parents are becoming frustrated because they have gone from the ages of 12 through 17 being told that travel baseball was the, was the pathway because everybody that's come before you has become a knight in shining armor at the division one level or a major league draft pick because they've worn our uniform and they've played in our organization. There are a handful of travel organizations that have tremendous coaching, they have tremendous strength trainers, and they truly prepare student athletes to play at another level. But all travel ball teams are not created equal. And so I want parents to understand Dave Serrano and I are not going to offer you pitching lessons. We're not going to offer you hitting lessons. We're not going to talk about velocity and metrics. We talk every Thursday to a college head coach. <clears throat> we do that to allow parents and student athletes, more importantly, to get a sense of who these people are and what matters to them, what's important to them. Because if it's important to them and you get a heads up, you can go to work on that. We're not going to tell you not to play travel baseball, although that may sound as if what we're what I'm talking about presently, but it's not. I'm going to talk to you about what's important, when it's important, and that you're going to now have a resource between Coach Serrano, myself, former college coaches like George Horton, who's legendary. That's the godfather of college baseball. Look up George Horton. Larry Simcox, who is an assistant coach at University of Tennessee with Coach Serrano. Collectively, we're going to make ourselves available to you as parents. And we're going to do it in a classroom environment based on your time over the course of four to six weeks. You're going to have homework every week. You're going to submit questions to us. And we, in turn, are going to discuss that topic. And we're going to formally respond to you. I, on my phone, and I know Coach Serrano is the same way, we get calls all the time. How did my son look at this event? How did my son look? Does the college coaches, did they notice? What did they say? How fast was his 60? <clears throat> I don't want to be uh, a showcase. We don't want to be a tournament. We don't want to be a tournament director. We want to be a educational resource that allows you as parents to stop chasing, to stop trying to capture four, five, 10 rabbits and allow your son, if they have the ability to play college baseball, to maximize that opportunity. That's what the point of these live discussions are going to be. Now, I put myself out on social media. Um, you know, I get a lot of messages some positive, some negative. I want to make three things crystal clear, absolutely crystal clear. How clear? Crystal. One, nothing that I did as a dad for my sons really matters to you or your sons other than I've experienced the whole process. I am not trying to make your sons my sons. I'm not trying to, in any way, shape, or form, say to you that either myself and I'm sure Coach Serrano uh, and Coach Horton and others would say the same thing. We don't have all the answers. We learn just as much every day about the game, uh, and we keep our minds open to uh, new techniques and thoughts and things. But what we have is experience. Dave Serrano is a college World Series winning manager. He's coached. At the highest levels, call it Team USA, SEC. He's been to Omaha. Same with George Horton. These, these coaches have coached under legendary coaches like Augie Garrido. They can offer you, they offer me, tremendous insight. 
We're going to make that available to you. Parents, we know you're frustrated. We know you're tired of spending money and not getting results. We get that. That's why we have, over the last four months, exhausted every opportunity that has been sent to our way, thinking what would benefit parents, what will benefit student athletes the most. We're going to continue to provide the books, more audio books, so that you can listen in the car under your own time. Uh, we're going to create more online curriculum where we discuss topics such as financial aid, admissions, uh, make, you know, uh, academic sources of uh, choosing majors in schools. Uh, we're going to talk about the whole college admissions process. We're going to talk about college testing, whether to take the test, not to take the test. But you don't have to just take our words for it. We're actually going to have college counselors, academic counselors, admissions counselors, financial aid counselors, these people that work at these colleges that you want your sons to attend, we're going to ask them questions on your behalf. So you just don't have to take our word for it. We're going to get deeper into the college application process. We're going to try to explain these new businesses popping up that are that are postgraduate schools, that they use the word postgraduate school, but all postgraduate schools are not created equal. We're going to have a bunch of those schools on. We're going to ask them the tough questions. We're going to find out if there really is a benefit for your sons to attend these postgraduate or gap year programs. We're going to talk travel baseball. When is it worth it? Why is it worth it? Is it worth it for your son? We're going to offer you evaluations you know, everybody asks me, where can I go? Nobody in my town. I live in Wyoming. I live in Idaho. Where can I get an evaluation? We're going to provide you with the evaluation. And before anybody starts to snicker, that's not going to be a cost per evaluation. So I don't want anybody to start thinking that's what we're doing. I want you to understand two things. I don't have a script. I'll never have a script. I'll say some silly things. But when I say something, I'm talking to you from here. Because I have just spent the last four weeks of this summer listening to parents on the phone, via text, emails, in person, and they're frustrated. They're going to camps. Their kids aren't learning anything. They're going to showcases. They're not receiving any evaluations. No college coaches are recruited in. How can my son be a high school senior and, and nobody, what's happening with this portal? Why is everybody going to the portal? We're going to talk about those things in a candid way, which is why I felt this was important to have a live dialogue. Now, I get asked, Dave gets asked, uh, can you do lessons? Who do we go lessons for? Have you ever said to a, a, a car mechanic, I'm just bringing my car in, just go to work on it. I don't care. Just make it work. Make it run better. No, you have them do an inspection. They give you a report and then they discuss what they would suggest that you have done on your car. We don't do that in youth sports. We just turn our kids over and say, hey, what's the cost? $100 an hour, $300 for the weekend? I just, hey, make my kid better. What's the evaluation? What does he need to work on? What am I going to, what is he going to be working on? Why is he going to be working on that? Pitching lessons. Well, does your son know how to throw first? Before we start talking pitching, how old is your son? Is your son 11? He's got a lot of growth ahead of him. He's not going to pitch in the same body at 15 through 30 as he is at 11, 12, 13, and 14. Hitting. We need strength. We, you know, we need to get under you know, a, a squat rack. We, and we need to do it professionally. We need to have somebody that can supervise and, and educate and teach your son how to transform his body. We don't just want to go to the local Planet Fitness or the local YMCA and start throwing weights around. We'll get hurt. This is about education. This is about information. And this is about providing you access. Six tool. Tremendous tool. It's going to educate, inform, not only you as parents, but your son as a, as a baseball player. It's a tool that's a separator. We're going to provide that. We're going to provide families access to make sure that they're giving their sons 
the opportunity to be as successful as they're physically capable of being. Okay, so we've talked about strength and conditioning. We've talked about, uh, okay, I'm going to get, Tim, I'm going to get to that question. And Mark, thank you for your question and your thought. Tim, I am going to get to that question. We're now going to talk about passion. First, we must have a strength. The next skill that nobody talks about, everybody plays the game, but nobody wants to come out and basically the elephant in the room, and that's passion. Every coach to a man, and I'm telling you, there were over 150 high-level college coaches, and there were over 700 student-athletes that have traveled tremendous distances to go put their abilities on display. Number two in deficiencies was the passion, the hunger, the aggression, the competitiveness. All of the boys, almost to a man, they all went out there and kind of went through their paces. There was very little passion that was we could see. Couldn't hear it. We couldn't see it. We didn't see it in base running. We didn't see it in their fielding. We didn't see it in their hitting. Passion, a love, an enjoyment absolute fever for baseball it's necessary it can't be faked we can't buy it we can't purchase it for our sons you know when a college coach comes up to you and i did this at least the 50 student athletes who is your favorite baseball player i don't know what's your favorite team uh yankees okay but nobody said I love the Red Sox. You know, when I was a kid, it was Carlton Fisk, Collier Skrimsky. Man, I could rattle off the starting lineup. I can still tell you the 1975 starting lineup for basically every major league team, including the Oakland A's. I mean, baseball was it for me. I just bought into the sport. Now, I'm not saying your kids have to be, you know, brainwashed. But are they passionate or are you passionate, parents? Is this what they really want or do you really want it for them? That needs to be asked. Those two things are important to Coach Serrano and myself, Coach Simcox. We're going to be presenting all of this on a weekly basis, probably for five sessions a year. And each session each session will be five and six weeks, maybe, uh, where you're going to have access to us. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is this is going to be this whole thing is a fantastic opportunity for you as parents and for student athletes, because you're going to hear it directly as we've proven you every Thursday, you turn in to talk to us. We're talking to the who's who of college coaching NAIA, NCAA divisions, one, two, and three Juco. We're talking to them. You want to talk to major league people. We'll talk to major league people. You want to talk to college admission counselors. That's who we're going to talk to. But we've proven that's who we are and that's what we do. I talk to hundreds of parents on a daily basis. That's how much money they paid me. This isn't about put a dollar in my jukebox and I'm going to sing for you. This is about parents are fed up. Parents have drawn a line in the sand. And that's largely due to the changes, the shift within baseball. Parents are not listening. I wrote that silly book thinking that every parent would kind of go pick that up. It's a short read. Everything in that book has come true. Major League Baseball in the last three drafts have drafted 78% Division I college baseball players. Out of 650 approximate Major League draft picks, 78% approximate are college baseball players. That may have gone from the JUCO route to Division One, or the NAIA to Division One, or a couple got drafted out of NAIA, a couple got drafted out of NCAA Division Three. But the emphasis on Major League Baseball is polished, older, mature athletes. 2021, 114 high school players drafted. 2022, 117 high school players drafted. 2023, 120 high school baseball players drafted. Those numbers are not changing. They're basically staying in line. What does that tell us? Two, 
as I alluded to in the book, the shift. College baseball is an older game. The high school student athlete is not being recruited now because of the rule change with one, can't get talked to till August 1st of your rising junior year. Coaches aren't in such a hurry now for the 14, the eighth graders and the ninth graders, as silly as it was, they weren't, they weren't, they're not going there anymore. Parents around the country go on social media. They're not going, these tournaments, they're not seeing all the college coaches they used to see. Guess where all the college coaches are? Summer college baseball leagues. Why? Because the portal, the JUCO guys that are developing and they are, they aspire to play at another level for a four-year school. Those coaches want to see those guys play because they're physically prepared to compete. So the high school player is really at the major league draft level for those elite athletes, as well as the college baseball players. They're being pushed down the ladder. We want older, stronger, prepared, polished players. If you know that now, why wouldn't you want to start that at 12, 13, and 14 and begin to have a plan, to begin to have a routine? That's what we're going to do. We want to make ourselves available to parents to answer your questions, not to tell you what we did 20 years ago, 10 years ago. We want to help you understand what's going on now. Okay. Old dinosaur glasses. First question, Tim. I'm not going to mention ages, but I'm going to paraphrase this question. My son is younger. I want him to play up. What are your thoughts? Yes, yes, yes. If I got this question a million times, I wouldn't give you an answer. Anything different than what I'm about to give you right now, Tim. Anybody that tells you that playing up is a waste of time is wrong. Anybody that tells you that playing up is not going to benefit your son is wrong. Anybody who tells you your son playing up is going to get hurt is wrong. This is baseball. It's not boxing. We're not, we have no weapons. This is baseball. Here's the number one thing. We've made it too soft. We need to teach the kids how to use their gloves, how to use their bats, how to move properly, how to feel the ball, how to throw a ball. Rather than saying, let's make this really simple and dummy down and stay down here and go six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's not how the sport works. The sport works for everybody that's trying to get into the college baseball world or the professional baseball world. Older players playing a game at an elite level and they're competing with their peers and older peers, high school, college and beyond. Either in, embrace that and understand the significance of that. When your son is 10, and he's playing against a 12-year-old, he can learn just as much. Now, I'm not advocating he sits on a bench for six innings every single game. But I'm telling you, a young boy can watch an older boy play and learn. A young boy faces a fear, a challenge, a hurdle. Not an obstacle, but a hurdle. When he goes into a batter's box and he faces Somebody that throws a baseball harder than he's used to is bigger than he's used to. He'll learn how to get out of the way. This is baseball. We're not throwing flamethrowers at him. We're not throwing wrenches at him. Famous line from dodgeball. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Same thing in baseball. If you can get in a box and overcome your fear, your mental fear of facing that 12-year-old, everything else is going to seem like I can do this. I'm capable of doing this. We need to allow our children to experience falling down, failing, competing against stronger student athletes. Now, I am not advocating a 10-year-old to play with a 16-year-old. For decades, and I have banged on this drum as loud as anybody on social media, Little League takes an absolute brutal beating. And the only reason why Little League takes a brutal beating by all these naysayers is because there's no money in it for you because you have a travel ball program. Little League is structured for children. That's a newsflash. Not a business entity, but a developmental program of baseball players. 10 through 12. 
Are there 13 year olders? Why, yes, their birthdays are a little bit later. Is that scary? Yes. Could your son, if he's not paying attention, standing on third base, get hit by a baseball? Absolutely. Three things are going to happen. Your son's going to get out of the way of the baseball if it's hit really hard. Two, he's going to try to field the ball with his glove. He's going to take one off the chest. Now, does it hurt? Yes. But he's going to learn. He, that 12-year-old is not going to hit a ball like a major leaguer. He's going to hit a ball hard. And please spare me about the bats and how hot the bat comes out. I've seen parents shave Little League bats. That's who we should be talking about. Heating up bats. Making bats. And you go and spend $400 on these thin barrel bats. That's a story for another day. But that has nothing to do with the realities of Little League. Playing up is a developmental model. Playing travel baseball by ages is a business model. Prove me wrong. Come at me any way you want to come at me. That's the problem with the game of baseball today, period. If your son is six years old, he loves the sport, he has a passion for the sport, and he wants to play. Letting him play against six, seven, and eight-year-olds is not going to hinder or hurt his development in any way. I promise you, they will learn how to throw the ball, how to hit the ball, how to run the bases by watching the older kids do it and wanting to. It's almost as if if I said to you, how fast is your son? Well, he's really fast. Is he the same speed or faster if he's getting chased by a pit bull? Well, obviously, he's faster than being chased by a pit bull. Okay, if that's the case, the eight-year-olds are the pit bull. Your son is going to get better. And guess what? If he's a pitcher or he's a hitter, he's going to strike out. He's going to walk people. He's going to give up home runs. That's part of the sport. Outside the box. Outside the box. Stop lesson hamster wheel that leads to the showcase and the tournament and the travel team and the U-Triple-S-A, double-A team, triple-A team, major team, garbage. Elite team, prospect team, gold team, white team, garbage. Hot garbage. I'll say it to anybody's face who owns a travel ball program. If everybody was free, you wouldn't be doing it. Ages 6 to 13, travel baseball is garbage. If you don't have a local team that your son can get reps with, find a local league where he can play up a little bit. Find something local. Keep them organic. Keep it local. Let your sons be kids. Ride bikes. Go get ice creams. Go wrestle in the back. Go play basketball. Go fishing. You don't need to be grinding at 6 through 13 through an 80-game schedule, playing five games and six games on a weekend with a 10-man roster and every kid having to pitch a stupid amount of innings. That is something that is very near and dear to my heart. If you're trying out, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this uh, as simple as possible. Baseball should be accessible and available in your town or in your city. And I want to make sure I explain this properly. There are people who will help families play local leagues, whether they're rec ball leagues, little leagues, Dixie leagues, pony leagues, uh, Babe Ruth leagues, you know, whether it's $100. Baseball should be accessible and affordable for all children that have a passion for the sport. We have been programmed to think the more money we spend, the better my son's going to get, the more exposure he's going to get, and by the time my son is 17, he's going to be a first-round draft pick. He'll be ready for Division I recruiting. Not the case. Here's the factual numbers, and I just want to use these as a foundation to everything that I'm saying. In the United States, let's just call it North America and Canada for art at College Baseball Insights. In North America, U.S. and Canada, we have approximately 500,000 student-athletes playing high school baseball in little league or the youth levels. And let's say six through 14 pre high school, we have approximately two and a half to 3 million student athletes that participate at some point during those ages to play baseball. 
So that means when a lot of boys get to 13 and 14, they play other sports, they have other hobbies, they have other interests. They just don't want to play baseball anymore for whatever reason. And now when they get to high school, the boys that want to play, now they're trying out. That's when tryouts really matter. Now, at 6 through, say, 10, 11, they're going to be tryouts. But they're really, it should just be to who can, t- what team can your son play on? In other words, does he play on a minor league team? Does he play on a major league team? That kind of, uh, but every boy should have access to baseball. One, two, paying to play does not make you a better player, a better prepared player. It doesn't give you more assets or insights. It simply just doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, you could play 100 games a year, and playing a game doesn't mean your son's going to get a lot of repetitions at shortstop. Doesn't mean your son's going to get an opportunity to throw runners up. Doesn't mean he's going to get a lot of at bats. I went to a, a game a few weeks ago uh, of a team that preaches development. They have they carry four catchers, and one catcher caught all games all weekend. And the three other three are fully capable. They just sat on the bench. They all pay the same money. But the development's going really well for those other catches, don't you think? And so my point is, is get your sons involved in a local league where they can have fun. They can develop passion. They can play and they can participate. Six through 10, that's what the whole thing should be about. Do I like the sport? Do I enjoy the sport? Is this something I want to become better at? Do I really enjoy putting the time and effort and energy into being a baseball player? Can I deal with the mental anguish, the physical mistakes, the errors, things like that? Embrace that time period because you can only do that one time in in their life. At 11, 12, we're getting into that 11, 12, 13, physical maturation takes over. Level of interest begins to change. Okay, now I want to get an evaluation. Now I want to understand, does my son have the ability? Does he have the passion? If he has those two things, Okay, what's the direction? What path do we go in? Who can point me in the right direction? Somebody that doesn't have any skin in the game. Somebody who's not getting a dollar out of your pocket in order for them to tell you what they think is in your son's best interest. The next thing you have to understand is tryouts or cuts are part of life. Wins and losses are part of competition. They go hand in hand. If you sign up to play baseball, and you're going to play in a competitive environment, one of two things is going to happen each and every game, a win or a loss. It's just part of being a competitor. The other part of this that needs to be addressed, baseball's hard. It's really hard. I challenge any parent to go to a local, you know, pitching machine, you know, whether that's a, an indoor batting cage, outdoor batting cage, put a helmet on, turn the cage up to 80, just 80. Get in there and and get in there and swing. Tell me what goes through your mind. Tell me you're not afraid of the ball getting away from the mechanical pitcher or the jugs machine. And that ball is coming in hot at 80 miles an hour. And then when you think about playing in college, we're talking 90 to 95 and we're talking all kinds of movement. Have you ever tried to catch a ball from a shortstop who has a really strong arm and the ball just kind of tails? It's hard to do. It's not easy. Have you ever tried to feel a blister line drive that one hops right at the base of your feet between, oh my gosh, I don't want this ball to hit me, and oh my gosh, this ball is hit really hard? The absolute instinct of shying away takes over. But yet your son has to learn I got to get my head down. I got to get my eyes down. I got to get my eyes low to the ground. And I got to use my glove to come through the ball and then make an accurate throw to first. It takes time. It takes repetition. The repetitions come through practice. The repetitions come through individual work. Tryouts are going to be a part of your son's future in basically all aspects of life, whether that be academics, whether that be in the professional world, There are people that are going to like your son's ability and feel it's a fit for a team or a program. And there are coaches and and programs that are going to say, you're not a good fit for our program. Variety of reasons. I was cut a bunch of times. 
my oldest son was cut a bunch of times. It all worked itself out because as my dad used to always say, you got two options, quit and stop whining or get out there and work harder and prove that they were wrong and you were right. You, you got two options. I don't want to hear anything else. But you need to understand that the tryout is going to make your son better. If he fails and he falls, what's his inner resolve? What is his inner drive? That's what we want to kind of see. We want to see that. Not everybody should make a team because a check can be can be written. I see a lot of travel teams carrying 25 to 30 astronomical numbers that carry 25 to 30 athletes. Oh, they all don't pay the same money. Oh, no, no, no. The real good ones, they pay a little. But everybody else is paying. How many repetitions are they getting through this 60-game season? But you still got to take the flights. You still got to pay for the trips. It, it, you know, my point is, is baseball – is about understanding who you are. Baseball wants you to know where you want to go. Like you have to have an understanding as a student athlete, where do you want to play? How hard are you willing to work to play at that level? How hard are you willing to work out that starting shortstop that somebody has told you you're not as good as him? How hard are you going to work for that? Or are you just going to cut bait and go find a team that says, yeah, you can be a shortstop? Trying out is not bad. It shouldn't happen at ages 6 through 10 or 11. But as you get older, tryouts are going to become part of this whole process, whether it's high school, college, or beyond. And when it gets to the college and beyond level, they don't care who you are. They don't care how much money your parents or whatever can pay. Can you, can you perform? Can you perform consistently? And can you perform when it's the heat of the highest temperature, meaning conference schedules, regionals, championships, are you going to be able to carry our team and be a part of our team or are you going to wilt and wither away? Passion is definitely a, a big part of the sport. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about that. And why I'm having this, this conversation. Now, a lot of people are going to find their way. I'm 47 minutes into a rant and a ramble. A lot of people have come and gone. I get it. People will find their way to this. And if, if you take nothing else from what I'm about, what I've talked about tonight, I want you to listen to this. There are a lot of parents that get to a, a stage as a parent of a 17 and 18 year old student athlete. Their sons have played travel baseball since six. They've made all-star teams. They've made high school varsity teams. And they're not being recruited. And they don't know why. And at the end of the day, the why is everything I've just we've just talked about. It's because they didn't really have a plan when they started this whole program. In other words... They didn't develop the passion in the beginning. And then when the passion became evident and the desire became evident, they didn't have the strength component. And they started doing lessons and they started attending showcases and they started playing travel teams and tournaments and everything just kind of got full speed on them and took them in through high school. And then they're going through these showcases in high school and it's not paying the dividends that they thought it was going to pay. We need, as a collective whole, to return the sport at the younger ages to the kids. We need to coach the coaches, meaning those of us that want to give back to the game, help coaches that could possibly be dads. Newsflash, they may be the only ones that want to donate their time. It's not like when I was a kid, when all these coaches coached for 30 years um, and they didn't have a dog in the fight, but now that's the the case that we live in let's coach the coaches let's teach them how to conduct the practice rather than saying what's wrong and why i don't want to be part of rec ball or little league ball let's help find solutions let's offer opinions and thoughts some will be utilized some will be discarded not going to hurt my feelings somebody says i disagree with everything you just said what a waste of breath okay at least i'm expressing some thoughts and giving some ideas and that's going to be the emphasis of what we want to do. We want to make sure that we are going to make ourselves available 
to you via direct message, via email, via the Q&As that we have here. Yeah, right now, there's some people that can see a lot of the live questions, a lot of people that can't see the ones that are coming in on my phone via personal direct message. The same thing is being how these people, how you're all responding is exactly how I felt most people would respond. Yes, travel ball is an integral part of the whole process, but it's not what it used to be, and it's not what you think it is. Do I think travel baseball at older ages, at higher levels, has a role in, in baseball development? Absolutely yes. At the younger ages, I don't think it is as important. I don't think that eight-year-olds need to focus on finding competitive, similar athletes that want to chew on rocks and nails and, and get, you know, they, every eight-year-old is not going to be in that mindset. Some eight-year-olds are still finding their bodies and learning about what they're good at, what they're not good at, and, and wanting to be around adults to help them learn at a slower individual pace, not like what Jimmy superstar Johnny can do at shortstop. I'm not as good as him, but I need coaching too. We need to make baseball accessible. We need to make it affordable. We need to make baseball. We need to bring the coaches like the, I'm telling you, guys like George Horton, look these names up, Dave Serrano, Tim Corbin, Jason King. I rattle them all off to you. They all say the same things I'm saying to you right now tonight with regard to make it accessible, make it affordable. We want to help coaches understand how to run practices, how to evaluate players, how to teach players. We want to be a part of that. Little League wants to do that. Dixie Baseball wants to do that. Babe Ruth Baseball wants to do that. American Legion Baseball wants to do that. All of these entities should have access and be a part for student athletes across the country. American Legion Baseball right now, as much as people don't want to admit it, is making a comeback. And it's making a strong comeback. And the reason for that is parents are starting to figure out, I don't have to spend $3,500 to $10,000 to go travel around the country to get repetitions and to get seen. I can play Legion Baseball. Not all Legion Baseball is created equal. I get that. But play Legion Baseball, get my repetitions, get my lifting in, get my strength training and stretching in, and I can make myself a better student athlete. That's the purpose of why I wanted to get this out in a live stream, maybe 50 people will see the live stream and maybe a thousand will ultimately see this over the course of time as it goes on social media and replays. I stand by, I, and I don't care who responds. I stand by travel baseball at ages six through 13. You will never get me to back down from that. I feel extremely strong that we need to provide parents an edification platform and program that will allow parents to have the peace of mind as well as a true understanding of what the college experience is truly all about. What are these coaches looking for from your sons? How can they communicate? Uh, how can your sons communicate with these college coaches? What the college admissions process is like? What the college financial aid process is like? Some schools uh, cost $75,000 a year to attend. Do you have that financial wherewithal to send your son to that school? If it's a Division three school and they just have merit money and not a lot of uh, Pell money or grant money, can you afford that? How can you make college affordable? How can you stand out at a showcase? How can you stand out at a college camp? Should When should you go to a college camp? Why should you go to a college camp? Why are college camps now more important than ever? You know, so these are things that a lot of parents don't know spending tens of thousands of, of dollars we want to inform and educate that's the purpose so if you have questions we want to answer we're going to provide you and i just had a parent ask me about six tool six tool as an app for college coaches high school coaches travel ball coaches for your programs for a team whether you have 15 athletes or 100 athletes is 300 dollars so if you have a college program and you have 40 student athletes or in the fall, you have 70 student athletes and you want to see what type of mind, mental mind uh, set that student athlete has, 
of course you're going to get that app and you can you can custom the app to talk about your travel program your high school program your college program and you're going to be able to know where your student athletes are deficient and what they need to know and work on are you kidding me if you have 30 students that's ten dollars a student that's affordable and that's never going up that's not anything that you have to say oh my god they got me in and now i no the six tool as an app is an app that you will need if you're looking to truly play at the higher levels because the mind creates instinctual baseball players being instinctual frees up the body to just react because you have the information you have the education the blue book we're going to plug you in we're going to make you have give you access to anybody within the game you need to talk to somebody within the game we're going to bring that person to you to get your questions answered it's a gosh darn free app it's free f-r-e-e it's free I don't want to follow politics and religion and or anything like that. It's none of my business. I, I'm a baseball guy. I have my opinions. That's it. I don't have a Bible. I don't have a script. It's just my opinions. And I wanted to give you an hour of my time uh, tonight before I talk to uh, our college coach to let you know we feel this is important and we want to provide this to you. We have created alliances that will be of benefit to parents and families. And that's, and I have, we talk, I talk to parents of six year olds. Do I do lessons with them? No. Will I offer lessons with them? No. Do I help them understand? Don't worry about these things. Don't stress about these things. Is he smiling? Is he having fun? Is he getting an ice cream? Is he catching the ball? Is he throwing the ball? Just trying to get you to understand what you're doing as a six through 13 year old is not really going to have any impact. Your sons are going to grow up. They're going to get physically bigger, stronger, mentally more engaged and prepared. Let them be a kid. Let them be a kid. Yeah, uh, see. The other thing I want to I want to end on this. And I want to make sure everybody understands. I have a lot of parents that are in a rush to get their children to play at the 60-90 level. Um, you know, the big fields. Little League age. I call it Little League. Let's just say ages 6 through 13. You can call it whatever you want, even including travel ball. Can we all agree that at those ages, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, Halloween, birthday parties, holidays, family, school, you know, summer vacations, they're a big deal to kids. <laughs> they can only be kids once. For one specific period of time, I don't need my eight-year-old to worry about how competitive his teammates are or his competition is. Because guess what? You can't control the other teams. You you know, you might have a team that's trying to put together all supermen at eight and nine years old. But I promise you, every one of those eight and nine-year-olds will not stay together. They will not all become high school baseball players. And they absolutely will not all play college baseball. So let's get back to understanding it's a sport, it's a game, it's something that children want to play because it's pastoral and it's perennial. Your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your father, your mother, your sister, we can go out back and we can play catch. We can do a wiffle ball. We can go to the beach and play catch. We can play catch with a tennis ball. We can play catch with a football. We can throw an object and play catch. As the boys get older and they clearly begin to define what they like and what they don't like, they get themselves physically prepared to compete on the big diamond, which is what I just spent a whole bunch of time talking about, strength and passion. What I want you to understand is this. We as parents hopefully have decades to enjoy being adults. We get to enjoy watching our children grow up. Hopefully our grandchildren grow up. That's something very near and dear to my heart. But children, they never want to let adults down. They don't want to let their parents down, their family down, or their coaches down. So when you ask children, do you want to go play five games this weekend? Yes, absolutely, because I'm making you happy. But guess what? They have to because you drive them. Would they really want to do that, or would they maybe want to play a game Saturday morning and then go hang out with their buddies 
ride bikes or go fishing or go, you know, play basketball? Do they really want to spend six consecutive weekends during school vacation traveling at eight in the morning, getting up for 6 a.m. to go to a game and then play five games? No. So parents, the whole point of this whole withdrawal of information and breath. I've listened to parents. I've read parents' emails. I hear the frustration. I see the frustration. I, I see the student athletes. How come nobody's recruiting me? I was told that college coaches were going to recruiting me by the time I was a senior in high school. And now I'm about to enter my senior year and nobody's recruiting. We're going to help. We're going to provide our, our time, our resources. We're going to present you with tools that if you choose to utilize them, great. I'm going to wear their gear. Uh, I'm not making any money. They're not paying me to do this. Blue Book is not paying me to, to come out on here tonight. I'm simply saying I am one person, an entire landscape. I get ridiculed all the time. I have some people that agree with me. I have a lot of people that disagree with me. I don't care about people that disagree because you're entitled to your opinions. My biggest thing is, can we all agree that the state of baseball as it is today, it's piss poor. The quality of baseball collectively as a whole is poor. The game is getting older. The shift has taken place. We're not seeing college coaches recruiting younger tournaments. We're not seeing high school seniors being recruited. We're going to not see a lot of the younger athletes getting recruited. And I want to provide you, we want to provide you with the why and what to do. If you think that's great, thank you. If you don't think it's great and you think this is all rubbish, no worries. I have no problems with that. Each and every Thursday, I'm going to have a college coach on here. We're going to have college coaches on here. We're going to talk to them. We're going to ask them real questions. We're going to talk to professional players. We're going to talk to professional coaches. We're going to get you information and allow you to do drills on your own, to, to navigate this process on your own. And if we can help along the way, great. If you don't need our help, no worries, no problems. If you take nothing else from today, this is just an opinion that I'm offering. We're offering to parents. Uh, Davis sent in a message. I spent some time with Dave today. They're wrapping up at uh, Tufts and MIT. I want to look forward to tonight. Tonight, I'm going to be talking with Brooke Fordyce. He is now at Kaiser University in West Palm Beach, Florida. Brooke is a former major league catcher a high school draft pick out of the state of Connecticut, tremendous athlete and tremendous coach, coaching at the NAI, NAIA level, which is getting rage, absolute every single guy in the portal that can't find a home at NCAA D Division I. Take a look before tonight's broadcast with Brooke Fordyce. Take a look at Kaiser University's baseball roster. Transfers from LSU, you might have heard of them. They just won the World Series. Marshall, there are kids from New England, Venezuela, Puerto Rico. There are kids from Division II schools from New Hampshire. NAIA is a up-and-coming, and they've always been formidable, but now they are becoming a trusted four-year option. And, I'm, and I want to give that opportunity for parents to hear from NAIA programs and JUCO programs. So thank you for joining me tonight. I thank you for all the questions. I'm sorry for the rant. I simply couldn't take it anymore. Uh, I mean, I sat with parents in a rain uh, on early Monday inside of Tufts. And these parents are broken. They're brokenhearted. They're sad. They're upset. Some of them I've never met before. But my point is they're upset. Their sons are not finding a home. We all have to stand up and give back. Those of us that have enjoyed the game, those of us that have the ability and the wherewithal, we have to give back. And we're going to talk about, we're going to have major league pitchers, my son being one of them, Dave Serrano's son who pitches professionally in Mexico being another. We're going to talk about pitching, pitching grips. We're going to talk to major league hitters. We're going to talk to major league catchers. We're going to talk to professional infielders, professional outfielders. We're going to provide you with these resources so that you can take notes like you were in a college classroom. Coaches Corner Curriculum. We're going to provide that to you starting in September. 
So thank you for joining me. If you have a question, put it in the comments section. Send me a direct message. Send me a message on any social media platform. Either Dave or myself will absolutely re respond and reply. I hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation uh, with Brooke Fordyce. And again, thank you for joining me tonight. And I look forward to next Thursday night. Dave will join me and we'll go back to our regular scheduled programming with Cliff Godwin, head coach at East Carolina University. And then following Cliff is going to be, uh, I believe the head coach, Ed at Holy Cross, uh, is going to be joining us after that. And we're going to have Scott Heather on again to talk about SEC pitching because he was a pitcher for Arkansas. Thank you for joining us. Until next week, be sure and join me in about 50 minutes or so when uh, Brooke and I start talking on the Coach's Corner. And until next Thursday, enjoy your week in baseball.